for who's who. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Devali. I'm gonna eat my leg services. <laughs> okay. Wonderful, Bill. Thank you for being with us. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So what are we doing tonight? For the next, let's see, 56 minutes with questions and oh, we have the Arc of Lexington, Arc of Onondaga. I don't even know how to say that. That is, yeah. Onondaga. Onondaga. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom is actually from Buffalo, New York, and she has a lot of like Chicktawaga and North Tonawanda. And so I'm, I'm, I've heard those. Um, okay, so I, I'm seeing a lot of different chapters of the ARC. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And I know many of you are from a lot of other awesome um, organizations. So the three things that we are going to focus on tonight, um, we want to spend a little bit of time learning about, and this is a lot to accomplish in one hour, right? <laughs> kind of touch on some of this, uh, learning about grassroots advocacy, uh, Understanding the power of your story. Um, Can you guys end, hear me? Yep. No, we're, uh, we're gonna end with um, some different opportunities to connect with advocacy right now because this is a really, really, really important month um, for advocacy. So any questions about our agenda before I turn it over to Sydney? Okay, I hope this is what you are all here for. Buckle Claire. up. If I can just like, <clears throat> for one moment, just for everyone's uh, knowledge, what we're gonna do is we're going to have a presentation for about 45 to 50 minutes with Claire and Sydney presenting. And then if you wanna put chats, <clears throat> questions in the chat, we're gonna be taking a look at those and seeing like we, where we can interject those. And then you'll have a time at the end to unmute yourself and then talk. So then, so we're gonna stay muted for the for, for this portion of the presentation. And uh, but certainly put your questions into the chat uh, as as Claire and Sydney are presenting. Thank you, Philip. Love that. Love that moderation. Um, with that, I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to to Sydney. Take it away. All right. So I'm going to be talking about advocacy. Uh, so what does advocacy mean to you? Um, if you want, you can unmute yourself and um, answer what does advocacy mean to you? And then I'll tell you what advocacy means to me. It means to help people out with disability who, who can't help their own selves. Yeah, that's a good response. Um, okay. Help yeah. others out with disabilities, get the word out there for everybody. I agree. Okay, I think self-advocacy means like working as a team, like if someone's struggling with something or wants something, like for example, like if I want to buy, let's say like an outfit and I'm not sure, and I'm not sure where to find it, I can always ask my staff, hey staff, can you find this for me or that for me? And I'll see what assist me and I'll be able to find what I'm looking for. Yeah, those are all good responses. Um, so kind of what advocacy means for me is um, being able to advocate for things that I need or want. Can um, you guys hear us? Yeah. I can hear you. Um, it also means to be able to advocate for other people with disabilities across the state. I can't hear any of you guys. You might need to turn up your speaker or find a find a way to connect on the on the lower left hand corner. I believe it tells you where your uh, speaker might be if you want you to select something else but certainly if you want to message me directly my name's philip uh you can directly uh, message me in the chat and i can i can try to help you out yeah i'm trying to and and i love this interaction i am trying to make sure people are muted though while we do the presentation but certainly um ask questions as you go along but um if we could um try to mute yourself during the presentation that would be really great thanks 
Yeah. So those were all really good responses about what advocacy means to you guys. Um, it means something different to a lot of people, um, especially uh, different states. Um, but everyone had really great responses. Um, trying to read the chat. Um, next slide, please. Um, so different ways to advocate. Sorry, um, my Zoom said there was flashing lights, so it dimmed my screen. So, um, but I know it's on it. Um, so there are many different ways to advocate. Um, there's in-person advocacy. Keep like pushing the unmute and stuff. I've done Zoom before. I just don't know. No. Um, so there's in-person advocacy, um, such as going to disability advocacy conferences. Um, and there's also like Dis disability pride fest. Um, they, and there's, but then there's um, the opposite where you can do advocacy online with social media. Um, I have my um, own advocacy Facebook groups and pages. Um, so that's another way to get information to self-advocates who might need it. Um, there's also ways of calling your legislator and talking to them about um, issues that are important to you. Uh, next slide, please. So what are we advocating for? Um, in my state, some issues that are, we are advocating for are um, the caregiver crisis. Um, there's just not enough caregivers in the state. So people are running out of um, places to find caregivers. Um, they're sometimes having to go to nursing homes um, way too young or they're getting put in institutions um, and there's just not enough, they're not being paid well enough. We're also advocating for um, voting rights um, and supported decision-making um, and quite a few other issues. Um, the SSI uh, rule to be passed too. Um, you might recognize someone in the middle picture um, on the far right is Claire. Um, next slide. Um, I'll let Claire take it away. Thanks so much, Sydney. Um, for, for part one on, on what grassroots advocacy is. And it is very clear to me that this group is not shy, which is great because one of the most powerful advocacy tools that we have is our own personal stories. Uh, stories about our lives, um, you know, the ARC, and I think probably many of the organizations that are that are here represented on this call tonight were started um, by people sharing their stories, organizing with each other to fight to live in their communities. Um, and, you know, for the ARC, we've been doing this for, for 70 something years. And, and as I said, I, I'm sure many of you in the organizations that you're from are in the same position. Um, and it remains to be the case that this is one of the most powerful tools that we have because stories about our lives, if you could change the slide, please, um, really serve four main functions. They educate. It is so often the case that even when you're talking to legislators, the media, um, the general public, people don't know about all of the different services and supports um, that support people with disabilities. Our lives are complicated. They're complex. Um, and as, as Sydney mentioned, um, so much of that even differs state to state. Stories also motivate, 
um, they can help people to take action. You know, maybe you learn something about your friend or your neighbor and you're like, wow, we really need, you know, to solve this, as Sydney mentioned, the caregiving crisis. Um, they also, <laughs> excuse me, make policy real. Um, and what do I mean by that? What, what I mean by that is sometimes in when we're talking about policy, we are talking about like, for example, a really big number, like $800 billion in cuts to Medicaid. Sounds really big, um, but a personal story about how that will actually impact someone's life um, makes, the, makes the issue come to life and makes it real for people. It's very different to say, $800 billion in cuts versus this will mean that X number of people, you know, won't be able to have caregivers, won't be able to um, get the transportation that they need, whatever it might be. And they also give the media a hook. This isn't a bad thing. We want the media writing about the perspectives of people with disabilities and their families in everything that they're writing about. And so, you know, Anytime you read a news article or you hear something on the news, oftentimes they're sharing someone's perspective, <laughs> excuse me, about how they're personally impacted, um, you know, in the beginning or throughout. And so we want to make sure that we are able to share our stories in those ways. And I, I want to give some tips now um, on different ways or, or different tips for sharing your stories for advocacy. Next slide. So Advocacy stories are based on a specific issue or ask, right? Like the word story is pretty general. We all have them, we all tell them. But but what I mean here is um, I'm gonna I'm gonna address. So I I just got a question that, in the chat of caregiving. Can we use more empowering language? This is a really interesting comment and something that we have been talking about a lot at the national office. Um, and it's something that we go back and forth on because I know that many people in the disability community have moved away from that type of language, care, caregiving. Um, we've actually started to sprinkle it in again. And for this reason, um, because the public and the legislators know what that means. Um, people don't, sometimes when we just talk, you know, amongst ourselves in the disability community, we use language that maybe not everybody understands. Um, and so that, I, I totally hear you, Karen, um, and thank you for that feedback. Um, but I, I just wanted to kind of share why we're starting to maybe think about it a little bit differently, although I know there's many perspectives um, on this. Um, so going back to advocacy stories, they're based on a specific issue or ask, right? They're not just kind of general stories, but we're talking about the type of stories that you would share. For example, if you went to meet with the legislator and you wanted to talk about how transportation is impacting your life or a certain type of funding um, is important to you and why you would talk about how that impacts you um, and then say, and that is why I want you to increase this funding or please vote yes on this bill, whatever it might be. They're short. Um, and again, they support what you want le legislators to do. They're for a purpose and they can change based on the topic or ask that you have. You might have stories about education or again, transportation or Medicaid, whatever it might be. We all have lots of stories about our life. Slide. They're clear. They have beginning, middle, and ends. They're honest. Um, uh, they don't use jargons or acronyms. Again, I, I think one of the things about, um, you know, disability services is that they are really complex. Um, and sometimes you, when you're talking, I keep giving the example of legislators, but it's true for the media, for uh, the general public, anybody you want to talk to, um, uh, our services are, <laughs> excuse me, really complicated. Um, and so it's important that we are not assuming knowledge. Um, and that means that we're not assuming that people know the acronyms um, or the kind of specific language. Slide. Um, and this is something that we like to say a lot when we're talking about stories. We say, be precise, be concise and be nice. Um, we never, even when we're disagreeing with someone, um, you know, it's really important that um, we are respectful of everyone's time. Everybody is busy 
And then the last thing that I want to share is we don't want to give people a reason to stop listening, especially nowadays, you know, things can be really contentious. Um, but we want to make sure that we are being always respectful, um, even when we are maybe are in a disagreement with someone, um, or perhaps, um, you know, maybe they voted a way that we didn't like, we want to continue to be respectful always. Slide. And here I want to share some examples of the types of stories um, that, you know, we use for in different ways in, in advocacy. This, this one um, on, I guess, the left is a really short graphic, and I'll read it out. Um, it's a picture of a mom and her daughter, and it says, we always want our daughter to be able to live at home where she's happy rather than in, in, in an institution or with strangers. Um, and then I think we're going to try to play a video here. Um, this is from a gentleman named Mike in Indiana, and he talks about um, the importance of Medicaid in his life. I think we are queuing it up. I'll give it another. Sorry, folks. One more. One, one second. Well, technical difficulty. We've seen the sound, obviously. Jen, before you shared, you have to make sure that you click share sound in the Zoom box. Do you <laughs> You know, I think we can just um how about this? Why don't I put the link to it in the chat? Um, and then everyone can you can watch it if you'd like. Um, or or do we have it? The help that I require with my personal hygiene and just everyday living. Wanna, could you start it from the beginning? The waiver has allowed me. Thanks. There we go. Thanks, Jennifer. Hello, my name is Mike Dunn. I'm a father and a husband, and I was born with cerebral palsy. Growing up, my American we dream can't hear it. Home, have a job, be married, and have a family. But I didn't think that was going to be possible with all the help that I require with my personal hygiene and just everyday living. The Medicaid waiver has allowed me to fulfill my American dream. It has allowed me to live the best life I can possibly live as independently as I can possibly be. Thanks, Jennifer. So I just wanted to give you an example there um, of some of the types of stories that, that we share. And that's the kind of thing that we would share with legislators, we would share with the media. We, we you know, Sydney mentioned earlier, social media is a great organizing opportunity for, um, for communities to come together around different types of advocacy issues. And that actually kicks me off into our next session, uh, next section, which is, different ways to take action right now. Um, and I am going to share two different ways. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Sydney to talk about what is going on this month um, and how you can get involved. 
So first up is every Wednesday, the ARC has something called We Act Wednesday. This is something, can, can you raise your hand or type in the chat if you're on social media, if you're on Facebook or Twitter or any of those things ever? Okay, <laughs> looks like many of us are. Um, and so, okay, I got a yes, wonderful. So every Wednesday on Facebook and Twitter and now on um, Instagram, the ARC posts a different way to get involved in advocacy. Sometimes it is as simple as um, watching a video or um, reading something. And sometimes it's more complex, like um, calling your members of Congress or um, making sure that you're registered to vote. Um, but this is a great way to stay involved in advocacy, kind of like little micro opportunities um, that you know will happen um, every week. And this is also something that, you know, you can share with your friends and family if you want other people, if you want to encourage other people to take action as well. Slide. And then another really important way to get involved is, and I'll type this into the chat right now, is by going to uh, the arc.org slash action. Um, and I know, um, Philip, if you want to put, um, you know, the I know the ARC in New York also has um, an action center and maybe other organizations do too, if you want to put them in the chat right now. Um, but if you're ever wondering um, what are some ways to get involved on the federal level with disability rights advocacy, um, you can always go here to the arc.org slash action, and we will have the latest of ways to contact your members of Congress um, and different issues. Right now, um, we are focused, as Sydney mentioned, on um, the supplemental security income campaign. Um, there's going to be a new bill that's going to be introduced, hopefully very soon. Um, at reintroduced rather is introduced last Congress that would update um, the amount of money that you're allowed to receive um, if you're receiving SS or that you're allowed to have. I'm sorry if you're receiving SSI, um, and um, so that's just an example of one of the ways that you can take action. You can call, email, tweet your members of Congress, and we have all kinds of sample language for that. Um, and I'm going to now turn it over to Sydney to talk about what is so special about August. Yes. Um, so August is Congressional Re Recess Month. Um, your um, representatives and senators do not take um, recess. They don't go out to the playground, but they do um, come home to their home state and they meet with as many constituents as they can. Um, constituents are people that live in their um, um, legislative district. Um, so if you know that your um, senator or representative will be home for the month, uh, you can schedule a time to meet with them. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here are some ideas for August congressional outreach. Um, the first one is set up meetings with your members of Congress. You can do that either virtually or in person. Um, you can go alone or you can bring other advocates with you. Um, the more um, advocates that are standing behind one issue, it's more powerful. Um, leave behind materials. Um, the ARC does have a lot of print materials that you can bring with you and leave with them. Follow up, um, make sure um, after the meeting, maybe a week or two goes by and you send them an email and um, you ask um, what steps they have taken or what they plan to take um, and you thank them for your visit. Um, the next um, idea for outreach is to invite members to visit with your organization or event. Take a tour and meet with families or self-advocates. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so another idea for congressional outreach is to attend a town hall event hosted by your member of Congress. So a lot of times um, your member of Congress will come home to the home state and say they're gonna meet at the library with um, someone else. 
Um, and then everyone from the town who wants to come meet with them will come. Um, and make sure to wear your swag from the ARC. Um, and another idea for outreach is you can host an action day um, where you can call them or meet with them virtually via Zoom or another way that's um, easy for you. Next slide, please. Um, then there's a disability policy seminar in April, um, from April 8th to April 10th um, in DC. So you can go there and meet with your um, congressman or woman and then um, talk about issues that are important to you. Uh, next slide. Um, and then any questions you have for Claire or I? I did see that um, Michael and Philip put links to other, um, to the New York Alliance for, oh, sorry, my chat just went away, for um, inclusion and innovation, where they have links to issues where they advocate for, which is wonderful, um, and the Arc of New York. So please check those out as well. William, I see. William, yeah, I was gonna say, William has a question. <laughs> I have a question. I um so I've been a disabled activist all my life and 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 I'm sick and tired of people who are disabled getting treated unfairly and throwing and you know it and um and and you know and 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 and, and um and how can I get my voice heard from social media? Because because I've been so I have been speaking at public events for the past few months in libraries, in different events, but I'm starting to speak out on social media, but it seems like the general public who are not today, but are getting, you know, somewhat uncomfortable or or not un or and unsure on on how on how to approach it. And the only audience I'm getting in people who are disabled, how do I meet out to people who are not disabled and how do I tell my story without offending the general public? That's a great question. Um, first of all, I say offend away. <laughs> um, it is all of our responsibility. I'm just kidding. You're not going to, I don't think you'll offend anyone if you do. Um, it is all of our responsibilities, right? To get involved. William, that's, that's something that I think about a lot. Um, I think sometimes, you know, in the disability community, people with disabilities, their families, friends, allies, professional, it, sometimes it feels like we're just talking to each other. Um, but in order to be effective, we are going to have to reach out. Um, I think you're totally hitting the nail on the head. Um, Cindy, Cindy does a lot of this work. Cindy, I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for William. Sure. Um... So um, kind of what I do is um, I, if I find a good article or if I post on my display advocacy page, I share it to like local um, community groups, like cities that are near me that have their own groups because that will reach like the general public. Um, but it's um, coming from me, but it's also coming from my advocacy page. So people start to look, um, then they go back to that page and look for more information. Um, and I, videos are quite effective as well. Um, in our state, we have a YouTube channel for people with disabilities that do videos um, to empower people. But I mean, you can start your own um, or, and talk about issues that are important to you and then share it on social media. Um, I like the idea of, those are great suggestions, Sydney. I, I also like the idea of giving people, um, William, that you're friends with or your neighbors, your family members, like little homework assignments. You know, you can communicate with them however you do, whether it's email or text or social media and say, hey, um, can everyone call um, the governor right now and say this one sentence about this bill that's really, or whatever it might be, that's really important to me. Um, I need everyone to do it and do a thumbs up when you've done it on this, on the Facebook or whatever. Um, you know, just giving people little assignments and telling them directly what to do, I think can be effective. Well, like that's what, that's what I tried to do. I, 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 I met people, I met people from 
from from all over the world who who are disabled, but at the same time it's like I'm not I'm not getting I'm not getting anywhere. So I'm not just, I'm not just gonna I'm not just gonna sit around and and wait for things to happen. I'm 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 literally like pretty soon I'm planning to go to Washington DC and planning to march in front of the White House because I mean people are today but it it's like every every week or every few weeks there's a story involving a kid or or a adult that is going missing or 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 dead or 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 dying and and um or any anything involving people are today but I feel like right now if if other people can get their freedom. It is time for for people wanted them to really just see who we are. We're just normal people. We have we have different ways of taking in stuff and, and it's time for it time for change. And that's why I'm I'm trying to make my voice heard so other people who don't have a voice can maybe, you know, can maybe, you know, speak out. That's great, William. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to get to some other people that have their hands raised. I see Gabby. I think you were next. And then I see Joey in the chat. So Gabby. Jen, do you want to mute Gabby? Sorry. I feel bad for people around that doesn't have staff, that staff goes away on them and doesn't stay with them. Because where I live, there's staff that leaves you and don't come back. Gabby, yes, that's a Gabby, we we entirely we we are there with you, one hundred percent, and that's why your voice is so important. Thank you. That's an, that's absolutely right. That's an issue that we hear about you know, all, all across the country. And, and like Philip said, that's why it's so important for everybody to get involved in advocacy. I agree. Joey, you have a question? Or a yes, I actually, I used to stand up for people in my hometown who had disabilities. I was one of those kind hearted but I don't pick on people with disabilities, I would intervene. Like I was God, 16 and I watched one of my friends that got pushed around and I had enough and I'm like, I'm like, this poor kid's got, he's in a wheelchair and something just made me react say, hey, pick on someone your own size. Yeah, we all have to stick up for each other and ourselves. Um, well, I, grew, I grew up with this kid and he... He got picked on a lot, and there was a lot of us football players, and it's enough. This kid couldn't defend himself, so all of us football players jumped in. Yeah. Turn that into advocacy, right? That was the beginning of your advocacy. That across it from one yard. Sure, go ahead, Bill. So, uh, uh, la. I'm kind of sick of, like, I went to Albany and talked to and say I get more people involved from my internet services. Like, we need help. And every time I'm trying to get people to help us with the agency, they're the, they're the Bellini. So I'll go up to the governor at Albany and I'll talk to the, and ask the, can we get more people around with the agency? Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing, right? Like we need more people involved in this work. Absolutely. One more thing that I was thinking about, you know, William, to the point that you were making um, is um, I think that when we do add, so this, I might be going on a little bit of a tangent here, so bear with me. Um, it's August recess. Members of Congress are home, as Sydney said. It's a really important time to advocate. Um, you know, you can meet with your state legislators right now too. Everybody. Um, and one of the things that I like about doing 
public advocacy at town hall events, asking questions, um, is because I think it's a really great opportunity. If you do get a chance to ask a question in front of a crowd um, about disability and disability services, the type of people who go to a town hall event are civically engaged. And it's a really great opportunity to educate them, the people in the room, about disability. Um, and so I think maybe William, you know, one thing that you could do or all of you could do, you know, as part of the recess, recess homework um, is check, try to find out if your members of Congress, your state legislators are having any events or meetings this recess that are for the public that you could attend and ask questions about about the things that you care about. Miss Claire, I'm even grateful I have staff that works with me. It's I moved to what, Malone? Yeah, Malone. Malone in May, and I'm glad that I have more staff that I can go out to do stuff with. And these staff treat me as an equal. That's wonderful. I, I see a question. I'm glad, I'm glad that I have people that care. Me too. Yes, Claire, I was just going to read that question in the chat. Um, you, before, like. you, before you do that, can I, can I comment on, I, I, you know, sure. I, I think Gabby and, and maybe it was, it was Bill and Joey mentioned the, the great staff. And I want to say that too. And that's something that we are also fighting for across the country. Direct support professionals need to be paid a living wage. Um, I know that that's something that we're all advocating for and there are amazing staff um, and they should be paid for what, what they deserve. Um, so thank you guys for, for calling that out. Um, and that is on all of us too, right? To do that advocacy and to bring more people into that fight. Um, so the question really, it's more related. So my wife and I are trying to work with consulates to help immigrant refugee, refugee parents in New York City and learn about early intervention for their children. Do you have any advice to spread info at this level? So I'll just say one thing that I know from our agency. So for people that don't know um, about the Developmental Disabilities Planning Council, we are 100% um, federally funded and our basic mission is to improve the lives of people with disabilities so they can live as independently as possible in the community they're choosing. And we do that through various grants. So one of the grants that we have is with through the um, Office of New Americans where they are helping people, uh, new Americans to this country um, that have uh, a son or daughter with a disability get uh, linked in, uh, hooked up with, with, you know, DD services, which obviously it's, it's a barrier um, uh, for many people, but certainly when you have a language barrier and you're new to this country, it's even it, it more of a barrier. So we do have a grant initiative. So Certainly, I'd be happy to, if you want to give me your email, um, have uh, someone follow up with you and give you some specific information about resources um, that, that you can connect with with our through our own grant. Miss Nikki, I'm even getting my GED too through helping my staff or helping me in my homework, and I go to class. Oh, that's great. I I see another question in the chat. Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not doing a good job monitoring the chat. I apologize. I was, oh, no. okay. okay, and I see, thank you, Ashwin. I'll take down your uh, email and we will get back to you directly. Thank you. Ricky. Um, I see that Marianne wrote in the chat, is it better to just write an original letter to officials or send one of those click and send type letters from different disability organizations? This is a great question. Um, and, and the answer really is um, uh, both, all, and call, and send a tweet. Um, but but um, it, is, it is best to uh, personalize the letter as much as you can. Um, most of the organization forms, I know at least for the ARC, you know, we want people to personalize it, put your own information in there, um, talk about how this issue would impact you, but also, um, if you can't, offices do state, I used to work for a state legislator in New Jersey, so I'm very familiar with like how those offices run. It's probably not that dissimilar to New York, but um, offices very, very much um, are also looking for quantity. We used to have a threshold that if it got to like, you know, 15 letters on a specific topic, we would bring them um, to the assemblyman that I worked for and say, hey, we're hearing this on this issue. Um, you know, we should have a staff meeting about it or add it to an agenda. Um, 
And so it, it's kind of like both and all. I don't know, Marianne, if that if that helps. Um, but certainly, um, we are trying to make things easy for people. And if the and if the choice is like not doing something at all versus taking the time to like write everything out, um, you know, click and send is totally fine because that volume does count. But if you have the time, write more. There, William still has his he has his hand up. Oh. William, do you have another question or comment? I want to just make sure that we. Unless you want to, I don't know if you kept yeah, your hand up or if you have I, anything I, else to, to I add. Have a, I have one more, one Hello? more, I have one more to add. So, um, so with, with, you know, with, with, with being disabled, how, um, um, with all my, with all the letters laid on, how do I, how do I find the, um, how do I find the right one who will be able to help me? And maybe talk to me because um a long a long time ago, um one of the double notes they you know I um um you know I I spoke to them about you know banning banning the use of the arbors in the inner dictionary because you know I felt like it was offensive. They they took me outside, hooked up a camera. And wanted to put me on a nude. The day after, I didn't end up on the nude. I felt really humiliated. Like, though you're telling me you're helping people in a com in a community, but you're not helping people who are disabled. It's a big slap in the face. So, how do I, like, I know I have to be nice to them, but how do I get my method of thought? And so they can really, you know, like that my that my that my foot rating that we really need change and did it not again, did it real life. So we do you know, how do I, how do I persuade them into, into, you know, into getting, getting my point of thought? That's a great question. Um, Sydney, I'm, I'm wondering, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I was still taking in the, taking in the question. Um, I do not yet. Okay. Um, one, one thing that comes to mind for me is kind of just like going back to, um, first of all, William, it's very clear to me that you are a passionate person. Um, you know, the way that you come across is very passionate. Um, so I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they do know how you feel. Um, do, do other folks have questions, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, suggestions for William on how to get his point across? So there's just, a, so he's saying like being treated, like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Treated like equals. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that. Everybody even, should be treated equal. Even though you're being criticized, you just have to learn how to, I wouldn't say like react, but learn how to cope with it. Like you could go for a walk or you could play grass. Do you, I'm sure you played sports before because everyone does. But you could, or you could like, you know, you could tell yourself, hey, I had a bad day. Can I, can I spend time with you? Can I go out to the mall, or, or you could count, or you could take like a deep breath. You could count to ten, and try yep. to calm yourself down. And say, hey, I didn't like how you presented that to me. I'm not upset. Can you, can you not do that, please? Very good. Or go to your, or if I were you, I would go to my bedroom, and listen to music and calm down before I do something wrong. Or if I were you, I would, or if I were you, I would go to my bedroom and write in my journal. Or if I were you, I would do some coloring. These are all these are all great ideas, William. Um, one one more thing that came to my mind is um, to find your advocacy friends. I think there's strength in numbers. And if there's a legislator that you feel like is really not listening to you, to you know, find other people in that person's district. Um, so there's like a larger cohort of you, maybe one person that legislator can ignore, but five or 10 or 12 or 15 or more, it, it gets much harder. Other, other questions?
There was um, a hi. This uh, is this is Obaida from uh, Catholic Charities. Um, I I work with refugees and. I also have a child um, with developmental disabilities who is nonverbal. Uh, what I find is very difficult. I mean, advocacy is a difficult job to do when you have a loved one living in a group home setting. Um, it, it just, uh, uh, it, it, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting really the system as you were all mentioning. I think it's a great idea because the collective voices, you could make changes, but one person cannot make the change. So. Uh, but how do you go about that? Where do you start? And, you know, I, I, I'm i having, I'm going through a lot of difficulties recently and I really, uh, you know, need to know like how to, how, I, I really want to make changes, but I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know where to start um, and, you know, who to get in touch with and to do it, you know, properly to do make changes. Because I know a lot of things, uh, you know, people start, but it doesn't end up, changes doesn't happen immediately. You know, how do we go all the way to make changes? Like, for example, I would love to see group homes having, um, you know, cameras in the main areas. And how do we go about that? Is there any grassroots that is happening right now? I would like, I would love to take part in that or anything else in that. Because, you know, especially, you know, and, and a lot of you that I'm hearing, it's wonderful because you do have voices and you could advocate, but there are a lot of folks that do not have voices. They are nonverbal, right? Yeah. So um, I, I, I would love to see some changes and I would, you know, love to contribute my time for that. So if anyone has any I suggestions, let me know. I got a question for you, man. So, um, um, now I let I I ain't saying, but I let a group home. Could you go a group home and talk about that? I'm also wondering if Vicky or Philip, do you do you have a response um, to Obida's question? Maybe so, something on in New York. Yeah, um, Philip would, or Michael, in terms of you know specific, you know. Her one specific act, certainly, you know, going to your knowing who your your state and set, you know assembly person and senator, I think, is really uh, you know obviously a good step. Um, also, you know, as far as having you know issues or wanting to have more of a voice with the provider, what what I found certainly, I, I have a son with a disability, you know, getting involved on a board or even a committee, just starting to get um, active with the provider organization that is um, serving your loved one. I, I feel um, my voice is definitely, um, you know, I, I have more of a voice when I'm able to, you know, sit at the table with the CEO of the, the provider that um, is serving my son. So I think those are some kind of really relatively uh, easy um, steps to do, but I don't know, Michael or Philip, do you guys have other things to add in terms of getting more involved and, and having more of a voice at the state level? I, I can piggyback a little bit on your comment about that, Vicki, um, to say, Getting finding others who are in a similar position and have a similar point of view, I think, is always really important. Finding peers to advocate with, and that's I think a great Vicky's suggestion of getting involved in in an organization that's already involved in some of this work to begin with is a great way to start to get a head start on finding that group of people and to kind of begin to to, to align with them if you believe where they're going is the right place or to go in a different direction if you want to advocate for something different, but you may very well find a lot of um, camaraderie, a lot of friendship, a lot of uh, peer opportunity by getting more involved in the service delivery parts of the system here. Um, there, there's an awful lot of advocacy that already takes place and uh, we're certainly looking for more and more of those voices to join in, I know that. Yeah, and I'll add to that, that you know, in, in addition to, yeah, thanks, Mike. Like, Mike is, is the bastion of wisdom, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I, I will piggyback again uh, to say, like, yeah, you're, the most important thing is to let yourself be known and to let yourself be known to uh, advocacy organizations who might have networks already with legislators, who might have networks with other people who were like you. I, I think sometimes we might find ourselves in the echo chamber of social media and, you know, talking with the frustration of other parents and, and other advocates 
not finding our way out. And so I think it's important to just like, you know, to find the avenue out. And we're really hoping that this cohort of people can, we can, we can help you and help, you can help us uh, together really figure out where we should be going because it's really, you know, we're here for you, not the other way around. And, you know, just so specifically like the cameras in, in, in houses, hot button issue, right? I'll just like, I'll go out and say it. That's a conversation that is we should be having uh, with with families, with with individuals, like with people, with uh, across the board. Um, and it's not that's not a conversation that should be had. I believe you know with fomenting some sort of angst with each other. We need to we need to get it out and we need to have those conversations sort of publicly with each other because you know again like we're all here for each other. I just want to also put a plug in for my agency because we have a council that the majority of our members are self-advocates uh, by law have to be self-advocates and family members of a person with a disability. So if anybody's interested uh, in becoming a member, it does take a little while to go through because you're you are appointed by the governor, but you are involved in policy um, making and you are um, the ones that um, make the decisions for our agency in terms of what grants we should be funding in such areas as housing, employment transportation and other major life areas. So I would urge you to check out our website, um, ddpc.ny.gov. Jen, can, if, can you put that in the, the chat? You're probably already aware because you've been dealing with us on the Advocacy Institute, but certainly encourage you if you have any interest in becoming a member. And there's other uh, state you know, boards and commissions. That's another way to look at if you want to make some, some inroads on state policy and, and um, initiatives. I see we only have a few minutes left. I see Jacqueline has her hand up. So Jacqueline, do you want to ask your question or make a comment? Hi, yes. Um, good evening. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for conducting this. Um, this is my first time, but I'm I'm learning, I'm writing so many notes. Um, I am a parent of a child with special needs. I have a 21 year old, um, very low on the spectrum and I'm constantly advocating. Um, I've been advocating also my parents when they immigrated here, the language barrier, I feel like I'm constantly, and um, I try to get involved, I do, and I'm also a self-direction broker, but um, thank you. Any, any, yes, any information, any way that I wanna be, I'm, I'm like eager to like really be involved and really like you, just what you said, be at the front table of what, where he's getting his services. I, I, to me, it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference, you know? So thank you. Any information is greatly appreciated. And this I'm learning every day. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for being here tonight. Um, and I, I also want to flag in case anyone missed it that um, everybody, you know, Jacqueline, you, you talked about information. People have been putting <coughs> amazing um, links uh, in the chat about a statewide self-advocacy conference. Um, Sydney, I have to put a special plug in for this. Um, so Sydney kind of undersold herself a little bit. She's actually a celebrity in Wisconsin. Um, she, she runs a self-determination YouTube channel. Um, it is amazing. She put a link to it in the chat. Um, she also failed to mention, Susan, Sydney, I'm teasing a little bit now, but she also failed to mention that she is the proud I don't know, mother, sibling, friend to like 24 chickens. Um, and they are also often featured on the YouTube channel. So I highly recommend that you check them out. Um, every time Sydney and I talk, we talk chickens. So it's it's awesome. But you'll also learn a lot about advocacy too. It's not just chickens. So. I got a cost there. Mm -hmm. Well, I know we only have a couple minutes left. Um, does anybody have any other final questions uh, for this evening for Claire and I? I just want to take this opportunity. Thank you so much, Claire and Sydney, for taking the time to present to us tonight. Um, it was so helpful. Yes. I got a question. Yes. Like, I, I, I only bought for my elect service too. Uh, can, can you email me the, the stuff what you were talking about? Sure. I think we should have your your email address if you um put a or if you can put it in the chat because we're going to save the chat that would be great in the comments so that we thank have everybody's you. email address that would be great um but again thank you so much Sydney uh, and, and Claire for taking the time it was very informative and thank you all the participants for for joining us this evening I do want to put a plug in now 
to take our survey. Jen, do you have that up? Or any final words, Clarence, Sydney? I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to make sure people fill out our, our, uh, our quick survey too. Thank, Thank you for you the so opportunity. Much. I really enjoyed it. Me too. Thank you so much for, for having that, us. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank so, you. Jen, could you bring that up? Yep, the, uh, the survey link is in the chat. Oh, sorry. So if you guys yep. go into the chat, there is a survey link. Um, and great. Well, I hope everybody has a great night. And I really look forward to seeing uh, many of you at our in-person advocacy institute in September, September 21st. For those that are coming in the night before, we are going to have uh, a screening of our documentary on Willowbrook. So we would love to have you join us for that. And we really look forward to a very exciting and informative uh, day of learning about advocacy. Vicky? Yes. I can't wait. It's September, uh, the day of the Institute is September 21st. And there's, uh, you know, if people are coming in from out of town, you would be, you could come in the night before on the 20th. I can't wait. Uh, uh, there's one last question, Claire. If you, did you see that in the chat? I don't want to, is it better to write an original letter to officials? Or just, or is that an old, I'm sorry, that, is that an old question? Did you already answer that, Claire? I apologize. Yes, I, I don't know how, I, how that did it. All right, good. You did answer that. I'm way, way. I don't know what happened there, but thank you very much. I just want to make sure I got everybody's questions and comments. Have a wonderful night, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you in another couple months in person. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank Have you. a good evening. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Ricky. Thank you. Josh, um, you signed up for the Institute. Uh, are you still on, Josh? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, Jen. Do we have Josh on our waiting list? Do you know? Josh, what's your last name? Uh, Derek. D-E-R-R-I-C-K. I will. Because I would really like to go to attend it because I had signed up to attend it with my, uh, with my, um, my um, self-direct that. And because I wanted to be there too at the institute to represent to my uh, self advocacy group from the Arc of Monroe. Okay, well, we'll look into. We had so many applications, and unfortunately, we only have thirty um, slots, so you may be in the waiting list. So we will check, and Jen will get back to, to let you know um, if because some people did drop out. So we'll see what the status is. We'll get back to you. You got me and that, Ricky. Um, we'll have to check, Jen. Do you know? Bill, what's your last name? Bradley. Can you spell that for me? I just want to make sure I have it. B-R-A-D-L-E-Y. Okay, I'll have to check and see what's going on there. And Jen, you're saving all the uh, the chat links and everything, right? We're going to save that so we can have email addresses. I wrote some of them down, but I might have missed some. Yep, I have it all. All right. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Thank you, everybody. Have Thank a you. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.